You may not know this, but last year, 2019, was a fantastic year for anyone investing on the financial markets. Whether you're a spread better, trader or long-term investor, it was relatively easy to make money. I mean, if you simply bought and held the FTSE 100 index all year, you would have made 9% return on your capital. Many traders, spread bettors and investors that I regularly speak to didn't make that much. In fact, according to BrokerIG.com, over 85% of their clients actually lost money in 2019, which I find absolutely astonishing, but it's true. And if you go onto IG.com, the very top of their website, they will show you 68% of retail investor accounts lose money when trading with that provider. And this is common across all of the different brokers. To me, the index is the benchmark. When simply buying and holding the index makes you 9%, anything less than that means that whatever the trader or investor is doing, they're simply throwing money down the drain. Why are people losing money in a year that was so favorable then? Well, it's often ego or stubbornness or some deep held belief to want to prove something to the world or it's simply not knowing any better. And I've met traders who lost money in 2019 and then justified it by telling me that they're on a journey and it's all part of their training, which is just nuts. Losing money in a year where buying the index would have made you money is crazy. I'm all for trying out new ideas and strategies, but get your 9% minimum banked first and then try to improve upon those returns, surely. Why are so many traders and investors doing it backwards? They're trying to improve upon this 9% before they've even banked it themselves and instead they're ending up losing money. It is so very true that traders and investors and humans in general are highly illogical. Now, I'm obviously not suggesting that everyone should just buy and hold the index as an investment strategy. I'm simply using it as a comparison against the laborious experimental efforts people are putting in to walk away in 2019 with minus 30% losses or worse in some cases compared to the ease of doing very little for a base 9% return. Personally speaking, in 2019, my portfolio achieved a 38% return against the FTSE's 9% return. As I said, it was a great year. However, over the last five years, my portfolio has achieved an average yearly return of 22.2%. Now, most beginner investors grossly underestimate just how powerful a return that is. So let me help you put that into a little bit of context here. A £5,000 account plus a £100 additional investment a month would be worth £75,906 in 10 years' time, which itself would be generating, roughly speaking, about £2,200 a year in dividend payouts at a 3% average yield. So in other words, in 10 years, you could be generating £185 a month without even needing to touch the original £75,000 principle. Now, amazingly, after 20 years, it would be worth £602,000, generating £18,000 a year in dividend income using the same 3% yield average. And that works out about £1,500 a month, again, without touching the £602,000 principle. And then after 30 years, if you have that amount of years in you, uh, it would be worth about £4.5 million generating £135,000 a year in dividend income. That works out about £11,250 a month. Again, also without needing to touch the £4.5 million you have it sitting in there. And of course, if you reinvested those dividends by buying more shares in the right stocks, the growth would be dramatically quicker. So for a 35-year-old today to look forward and have £4.5 million working for you age 65, it's something most of them won't ever see. Most traders out there losing money in 2019, certainly, they won't ever see it. They'll likely spend a couple more years tinkering away with you know, the complicated system, losing more money along the way before they'll just end up quitting. Not only losing money, but wasting years of compounded growth opportunity. Now, I don't want anyone watching this to get me wrong. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. 
you will not be able to quit your job next week. You're not going to be able to buy a Lamborghini in a couple of months. You know, it's going to take me another 16 years at 22.2% return a year to reach my first million. Unless I see an increase in that average return, which could get me there sooner. But the fact is, you know, I will eventually get there. It's simple mathematics. Now, one question I've heard a couple of times is, what if there is a stock market crash? Won't I lose all my money? Now, you'd only lose your money if you were looking to sell at the worst period of time, right? If you bought a house for £250,000, you don't wait until the housing market suddenly plummets and you sell it for, you know, a fraction of what you bought it for. Why would you do that? You'd be, you'd be nuts, right? You don't do that the same as you wouldn't do that with your stocks. So if you've got a position here, I mean, we're looking at Diploma PLC. Let's say we've got a portfolio of stocks in 2007. Uh, during sort of 2008, 2009, you can see here there was this dip in price that fell down. That was the subprime mortgage crisis in 2008. That was the housing market crash 2008. All the markets got hit. The, the housing market got hit. The financial stock market got hit. Uh, and a lot of people's positions lost money. A lot of people got wiped out during that period. I know many investors, people that I know personally, that lost millions during that period because they made some very bad decisions leading up to it. Now, look, we wouldn't sell our positions down here whilst the market is down low, right? There'd be no reason to do that. They're, they're, they're cheap. So why would we buy them high and sell them cheap? We wait for the market to recover. And the markets always recover after crashes. They always have done, right? So we're going to wait for better times. We're going to wait for these prices to come back up again. But the beauty of this is that the stock market crash gives us great opportunities to continue buying fantastic stocks. We're only looking at the best of the best. But we can continue to buy fantastic stocks, but now at cheaper prices. And the beauty of this is that the original positions you had prior to the crash are now back to where they were just a couple of years after the crash. Just a couple of years. But even better than that is we've made a fortune during that period because we're buying on the way up. So by now you're probably thinking, who is this guy? Well, that guy on stage standing in front of a thousand people at Westminster in London, that's me. My name is Chris Chillingworth. I'm a self-taught stock analyst who's taught over 1,500 people now how to pick stocks and more importantly, why. I'm the host of the FTSE Show, a series dedicated to financial analysis of UK stocks and I'm also author of a book called Invest in Your Money on the Stock Market. I've been helping people make better returns slowly but surely from the stock market for the last seven years now. Uh, none of this Bitcoin or Forex stuff you see everywhere today. I'm not interested in trying to get rich in the next few months. Uh, I've been around long enough to know that these high risk, high reward approaches, they seldom work in reality. Uh, I should say some of them do work, but most of us find out we're unable to do it practically. Now, I invest in a very particular kind of UK FTSE based stock. I use a criteria that I myself developed and have applied with great success now. Most FTSE companies I analyze fail my criteria. They fail it miserably. Uh, companies like BT, BP, Tesco, Vodafone, Centrica, AA, and many others are companies I would never invest my capital into. Uh, they do not produce the financials that I'm looking for in a company. In fact, at the time of recording this, only 29 companies have ever passed my test out of hundreds of FTSE stocks. Most companies I invest in you probably haven't even heard of. Most of them are not household names. Yet these companies are smashing in areas that really make a difference. These are companies from the FTSE 100, the 250, the small cap and even the AIM markets. My analysis of a company can take a few hours. So I do everything manually. Why? Because these websites out there that provide all the financial summaries, they miss an awful lot of information. When a company sells off a, a section of its vehicle fleet, for example, let's say for 10 million, it looks like the company are doing great. But this is classed as an extraneous sale. It has nothing to do with the day-to-day -day recurring yearly business. They cannot rely upon selling a section of their fleet every year. And for that reason, I omit these sales when assessing any company that I look at. These online financial summary websites, they cannot give you such insight. My criteria has been carefully designed and tested to identify growth stocks. Companies whose share price has the best odds of rising over the next one to five years, perhaps even longer. The number one measure of what moves a share price over the long term is 
quite obviously the company performance, right? But how do you judge a company's performance? Well, that's the profits, like all day long. Profits, therefore, are the lifeblood of any growth stock. And what makes my approach different is that I only rely on the facts. I'm not interested in forecasts. I'm not interested in opinions or speculation or predictions. These have no bearing on my investment decisions. I have no personal bias to any of the stocks I analyze. And that's the beauty of, the, of numbers. They're factual. I'm not interested in stocks like BP or Tesco that are worth today the same they were 20 years ago. I mean, look at this chart of Tesco PLC. Back in the year 2000, this company was priced at about £2, £2.50 a share. Uh, we can scroll along to present day and find, oh, look, they're still worth £2.50 a share. Sure, they've been up and down over time, but if you've been an investor holding on to Tesco for the last 20 years, you're probably not very happy. I'm not interested in companies like this. Now, I wanted to show you this, guys, uh, as an example of how some of the leading stock analysts out there can get it wrong. Uh, now, I've blanked out the name, I've blanked out the website because I don't want to be going around, you know, bad mouthing certain analysts. Uh, but it's just an example. Here is a, an article which talks about how there are two small cap stocks that could smash the FTSE 100 this year. Uh, and they talk about a company called Quiz PLC. And they hype it up. They talk about, you know, how great this stock is, how we should all be getting involved in it. This was posted on the 5th of June, 2018, uh, whilst the company was at a share price of £1.70. And basically they say, you know, this is a great company to get involved in, to, to buy stocks in, uh, who are, you know, going to have a really good year, right? This was the 5th of June, 2018. If we look at the chart, it says otherwise. Uh, as you can see, I mean, here is where they kind of, picked this stock around £1.70. It was literally one, two, three, four months later and the stock fell off a cliff and it's never recovered. Never recovered. In fact, it's continued to fall to what is now 12 pence per share from £1.70 per share. Now that article I found online but was also sent out via email to over 50,000 subscribers to this stock picking newsletter. And imagine the amount of people that took action based on that report that went out. No one knows how much money would have been lost by those people who had taken that advice. But if you look through the financial results of this company, Quiz PLC, we wouldn't have touched them with a barge pole. The numbers were just nowhere near strong enough. They were too young on the market for starters. They didn't have enough of a history behind them. But also the actual financials that they achieved were on a downward trend profits were falling and there was an obvious trend of concern within the numbers yet here was one of the most popular stock pick websites out there recommending this stock now this might not be pretty to look at but uh, this is a breakdown of the 29 different stocks and how each of those 29 stocks performed across the year of 2019 broken down month by month recording the share price on the first of every single month just to as a snapshot to show what that share price had done and then recording the percentage rises and falls of those particular stocks you can see stock number one in january went up four percent then it went up a further five percent up another five up another five up one up ten then down 12% in July, and overall 2019, it scored a 24% rise in value. Stock 2 achieved 60%. Stock 3, unfortunately, was one of our uh, one of the two stocks that went down in value, uh, down by 27%. But, I mean, look at this. Stock number 23 went up 100% over 2019. Stock number 29 went up 63%. Uh, looking over at stock number 13 that went up 66 percent we've got a 61 we've got a 57 uh, i mean we've got 60 up here as well there are some fantastic returns on many of these companies are 29 companies and this is proof that cherry picking using my criteria massively improved the results that we achieved from the FTSE 100 uh, the FTSE 100 achieved 9%. Our portfolio of 29 stocks achieved over over the course of 2019 achieved 38% return. And this is what I mean by a growth stock. This is one of the companies within the portfolio. Uh, I think it's company number three. This is another company within the portfolio. You can see there's the obvious trend here. 
but this is years worth. This is 2012 to current day. I mean, just look at that growth. These are exactly the sort of stocks my criteria allows me to identify and get involved in. And here's another one. This is another stock within the criteria. Again, we're looking at years and years worth of growth here. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, it's this is a stock that's been smashing it for many, many years. We got into this stock many years ago based on the financials of this particular company. So I've been doing this now for a number of years. And over that period of time, a lot of people have come forward and said, look, I don't have the time to invest in uh, analyzing these companies. I don't know really what I'm looking at when it comes to the numbers. Can you save me time and effort in just telling me what you found? And initially I wasn't very keen for many years. I said, no, I wasn't involved. In, I wasn't interested in doing this. Um, but in 2019 and 2020, I started to share my results, my findings with people, my uh, my analysis results. I started to share the stocks that I was investing in with people, along with the, all the, the key detail as to why I was picking them above everybody else uh, and allowing people to use that information to make their own judgments, essentially, to build their own portfolios with only these fantastic stocks that I was identifying. And um, this is an example of one of the fortnightly reports that I send out to people. Um, it is like a, a kind of a magazine, I suppose, in a way. I kind of did it in that way. But providing all the information that somebody would need to make an informed decision on whether or not they wanted to include this company as part of their portfolio. And we break down all the numbers. We look at all the, the financials and my commentary on uh, what all of these financials are showing. Again, no opinion, just pure factual information. And this is an example. And back when I reported on this company, this is December 2019. So at time of filming this, we're talking about three months ago. Uh, this was a stock, if you can see down here, £6.72 a share. If we look at the price of this today, uh, they're trading at £7.28 a share. So we've gone from £6.72 to £7.28 so far. It's been a fantastic stock that I've been following for many, many years, and it continues to uh, pay out and continues to grow for many of my members now. In addition to this, I also do another tier, uh, which costs a little bit more. It's very, very affordable. Uh, and the return on investment is a no-brainer, really, uh, for the fee. But I do a, a weekly report that covers uh, covers commentary on, on the growth and fall of every single stock within the portfolio. So it's essentially a report on the 29 companies that make up the portfolio. Now, this can go up and down. You know, As we find more companies and we add them in, the number can grow. Sometimes companies get kicked out and we f the numbers drop a little bit as well. So sometimes we've got 28 stocks in there. Sometimes it could be 32. You know, It really depends on how these companies are performing. Uh, but this is a report that breaks down all of the constituents of my portfolio, comment uh, providing commentary on those companies, as well as giving a, an insight into how all these different stocks are performing on a week by week basis so you can see the entire portfolio and how all the different constituents are contributing towards the overall score we also compare the overall portfolio against the market as well uh, and this is a weekly report so you're paying more but you get way more information you're getting an insight into the entire portfolio and you get that weekly instead of fortnightly too now look sometimes they get these negative messages like you know, if you're making so much money, why would you charge for this information? So let me address that early on, because I think it it's deserves a response. So first of all, I'll be completely upfront and honest here. I love making more money. I want to make more money. <laughs> and I can do that by sharing the things that I know. So yeah, I'm going to charge for it. Secondly, damn right I'm going to charge for it. I'm putting in hours of work per company so my members don't have to. Most of my members don't have the hours spare each day to go through these companies with, with such fine detail. Thirdly, most members wouldn't know how to interpret the company reports anyway, even if they did have the time. I've built my own criteria to help myself pick the best stocks for share price growth, and it works. I've spent years learning how to do this, years putting it into practice and getting results before I even told anyone about the work that I was doing. So if someone wants to bypass all of that and reap the same benefits that I get, then they should be parting with some of their money for it, right? That's only fair. Since when did successful people start being expected to give away everything they know and worked hard for 
to those who didn't. It's not a realistic view of the way money changes hands. If you find a way to add value in the world and there's demand for what you offer, you'll make money out there. That's just the way the world works. Finally, it's a great ROI. It's incredibly cheap. We're talking about the two reports a month being £20 a month for two reports a month. Now, if you want the full weekly analysis report of the entire portfolio and all its contents that you get every single week with all of that information, it's £57 a month. So we're not talking big, big money here. If this is information that's going to help you make way more money than that, it's a massive ROI. It's a fantastic ROI. You're investing £57 a month to be able to, to turn your capital into far greater sums. So it's a it's a it's a it's a win win. I win. I get paid for my time and my effort. You win because you get a return off the investment that you've made. So it's a win win situation. So look, if you've reached this point of the video and you're interested in getting involved, if you're interested in uh, twenty two point two percent average annual return over the last five years, if you want to be a part of this going forward, uh, here is how you get involved. You go to thecleantrader.com and click on stock picks. This is the website. It's thecleantrader.com. Once you go there, click on stock picks. You'll be taken to this page. You've got three choices. You can join the £20 a month silver, the £57 a month gold, or you can do the £97 monthly. I'll explain those in a little bit more detail in a moment. So I'm not a big corporate company. It is genuinely just me sharing what I'm doing. So when you sign up, you can cancel at any time. You could you could even just join for a month and then terminate your standing order if you're somehow not impressed by what you get. Uh, I've got something like an 89-90% retention rate after the first year of doing this. So pretty much everyone of those few who have left have done so because they either didn't have the funds to invest anymore uh, or they just wanted to take a break from investing, which is fair enough. Some people went abroad and went traveling and stuff like that. So regardless of the situation the power is in your hands if you i certainly don't want the hassle of closing down accounts or serving refunds so therefore i keep it simple you sign up you pay each month and whilst you're a member the reports land in your inbox if you don't want those reports anymore you cancel and the payments stop as do the reports simple easy no fuss so look, I'm sharing what I'm doing via these reports. If you think they'll add value to you and your returns, jump on board, join hundreds of others that are already along for the ride. If you're sceptical, why not sign up for the £20 a month service? Get a couple of fortnightly reports and upgrade to the £57 a month service later on if you want. There's very little risk here, guys. But listen, if you're in cloud cuckoo land and you're one of these types of people who wants to quit their job and make a steady 2K monthly wage of a 4K investment, then my advice to you is look, stay away, don't get involved, don't sign up. This is not a magic weight loss pill that you're looking for. But if you do like the idea of 22.2% return, if the compounded growth that I showed you earlier in this video appeals to you, if it fits your kind of financial plan, your growth rate and where you want to be in 10, 20, 30 years time financially, get on board. There's very little risk. You know, even if you jumped in for a month and then left, you can absolutely do that. There are no issues whatsoever. The silver is the two reports every single month that I showed you. The gold is the full weekly report that you get uh, on the entire portfolio. The platinum is both of those, but with some extra, extra training. Uh, you can jump on Skype and Zoom calls with me. You've got access to uh, trading psychology programs. There's a 30-step program in there. I review a load of trading and investment books in there. There's about 400-plus video library you'll get access to. You know, it's pretty huge. But if you're not really interested in any of that stuff and you just want the weekly report, you can join the gold for £57 a month. Listen, if you've watched this far, then thanks for taking out the time to watch this entire video. I know it's been a long one. Uh, but if you've got any questions at all, you can hit me up at the following email address. Uh, chris at thecleantrader.com. That's chris at thecleantrader.com. Feel free to drop me a line of any questions that you might have. Uh, or you're free to leave a comment below. I'll obviously endeavor to reply as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll hopefully see you soon. Cheers.